Welcome back to part 2 of my video on making this 12mm thick knife. In part 1 I did all of the steps, shaping and hand sanding to get the knife ready for heat treat, then when I went to heat treat it I cracked the blade, and I was really sad. The link to that video is in the description down below if you haven't already seen it. In this video I'm going to be salvaging what I can from the remains of that blade, and still making a cool usable knife from it. So probably about a year passed and I was looking for a project to do, I was pretty bored and I realised that even though the front of this knife was completely ruined, there was still a lot of usable and quite valuable steel in the handle and the first half of the blade. So I drew up a couple of designs which I thought could look quite cool. I then took one of the designs and decided to cut off the broken bit of the knife and carry on with this project, making a much shorter but still hopefully quite cool blade and hopefully not wasting all of the work that I'd come to do previously. I realised that in trying to salvage this metal and make something useful, I'm going to end up creating a knife that is going to be a bit of a weird shape, but I was fine with it, I just didn't want to waste all of the previous work that I'd done. Every time I chopped a piece off the knife, I didn't really like how it looked, and I ended up going through a couple of different iterations, slowly whittling away different bits of steel to come to a final design that I thought looked alright. I ended up coming up with this long, thin sort of straight blade which has two different edges and it tapers as it goes along, and I think that it looks quite cool and it's definitely very unique, I've never really seen a knife like this before. So as one of the first tests for my new heat treatment oven, I actually used that to completely anneal the knife, reset all of the stresses in the blade and do it properly this time. This worked really well, and the heat treatment oven is a super useful tool, I wish I'd had it when I first made the knife. Because the annealing had made the metal so soft and I didn't have that much material to remove, I decided to use a file and a file guide to make the bevels. This way I can make them so that they're both exactly the same and at a perfectly flat angle. This was obviously loads of effort, but by this point I'd realised that this project was literally just a time black hole that was just going to suck up all of my free time until I got it finished, so I just had to get on with it. This is the knife at 600 grit and ready for the heat treat, I've got my fingers crossed that it all works properly this time, using the new oven. So I put the knife in the oven as it slowly heats up so that it can soak in all of the heat as it comes to temperature. And once it's up at 800 degrees celsius this is what it looks like. I also put the oil bath on top of the oven so that it would preheat the oil slightly, but not as hot as I heated it up last time, as I didn't want to make the same mistake. I was really happy with how the heat treat of this knife went, it went really smoothly, and you can see that as I'm taking it out, the knife is at the perfect temperature, and the heat is completely even across the whole blade and the handle. This time the knife is literally as hard as glass, and it easily passes the file test. I tempered it in this toaster oven at 200 degrees celsius to bring down the hardness slightly, make it less brittle. It was then time to clean off the oxide and scale from heat treat using some 240 grit wet and dry paper. As I was sanding I noticed that this section just at the edge of the plunge line was looking really rough and I forgot to sand this before the heat treat. Because the blade is now really hard I couldn't even touch it with a file so I had to go in there with a carbide burr to smooth everything out. After I've done that, look how nice and even and symmetrical this plunge line section is. I'm really happy with the way that this has came out. This is what the knife looks like right now, and off camera I've sanded one side of it up to 2500 grit, and now it is a really shiny nice mirror finish. The other side is sanded to 240 grit, and now I'm going to show you how to take the 240 grit finish all the way up to the shiny 2500 mirror finish. 
This process is really simple, it just takes absolutely loads of time and a lot of perseverance, but if you do it properly you get a really nice mirror polished blade and I think it looks really cool. So I start at 240 grit and literally just work my way up, go 400, 600, 800, 1500, then 2500 grit. The most important thing is to spend loads of time on the lower grits to remove any deep scratches left behind by previous processes. Also, because this metal is so hard now, you have to use really high quality silicon carbide abrasives, anything else won't work. It only takes a couple of hours of hand sanding to bring the whole thing up to a mirror finish and I think this is a really satisfying process. After that it just takes a couple of minutes on the buffing wheel to completely polish everything and make it look really really nice. So the blade is literally like a mirror and I'm really happy with how it's looking. Time to move on to making a handle for it. At this point I noticed that I kind of screwed up again and I forgot to drill the handle holes before I hardened the knife. I kind of thought that since the handle was so thick, it wasn't going to harden as much as the blade and that I'd still be able to drill it, but this turned out not to be true. It was too hard to even centre punch it. I tried spot drilling it with a high speed steel centre drill and that did nothing. I then tried a carbide burr, but that's not made for drilling and that just broke as well. I tried a couple of sharp, high quality, high speed steel drill bits and even they didn't even touch the surface, so I know that I had to use something carbide. I don't have any tungsten carbide drills, so I had to make one. Masonry drill bits are high speed steel with a piece of t flat tungsten carbide soldered on the front as a chisel. I sharpened this tungsten carbide using my belt grinder so that it was actually a sharp edge and then tried to use that to drill it and surprisingly it actually worked quite well. It did generate loads of heat and it wasn't the cleanest hole but it was much better than having no hole at all. After drilling those three holes it was then time to choose a material to make the handle out of. I put a lot of thought into this and I decided to just go with something simple. I wanted something that was going to contrast really nicely with the shiny metal, so I decided to go with this black phenolic or phenolic plastic material. This phenolic material is made from layers of paper and resin glued together under extreme pressures and it forms this super solid tough material that makes really nice handles. I actually used it to make my indestructible axe handle in a previous video and it can sand to a really nice super smooth surface. This material isn't very nice to work with, however, it produces really toxic dust and also it blunts any tools that you're using on it really quickly. I turned three brass pins to the right sides using my metal lathe. I made sure that these were really close fit in all of the holes so that when the handles fit together, there's no wobble at all in it. After transferring the holes to the handle material, I then scuffed up and abraded the surface of the knife handle so that it, there would be a lot of surface area for glue to stick onto. As you can see, once that's done, everything fits together nicely with no play, which is really important. With one side of the handle attached, I could trace the outline of the steel onto the handle material and then remove that excess using the belt sander. So that means that one side is very close to the outline of the handle and I now need to make the other side the same. So I pin the two handles together using some excess brass and then shape the other handle side so that it fits the original side exactly. With the handle pieces down to the right shape it was then time for the glue up. In preparation for this I wiped down all of the surfaces using acetone to try and degrease them. I then just used a simple two part epoxy, nothing fancy, glued and clamped everything together and left it to set overnight. The belt sander was really useful for removing all of the excess handle material and glue. I then peened over the pins just by smacking them with the back of a ball peen hammer. This expands and swells the metal slightly, locking the handle completely in place so it will never ever come loose. The rest of the handle shaping was just done with simple hand tools as before, and I was really aiming to get a nice ergonomic feel for this handle, make it really rounded in every direction.
After the shaping, it was then time for the sanding, and that was done in the exact same way as the blade. I just started at 240 grit and worked my way progressively all the way up to 2500 grit, just taking my time and making sure to remove any scratches. After the final buffing, I think the handle looks awesome and it's the final straight for the knife, I just need to sharpen it. I did this using whetstone starting at 200 grit and working my way all the way up to 5000 grit. I was really careful not to slip and ruin the blade. After an hour or two of working on the whetstone, I had the knife literally razor sharp on every section. I could shave really easily with it and it easily cuts newspaper. And that brings me to the finished blade. I'm more than happy with the results and I think that this knife is so cool. In the end, despite all of the setbacks, I'm so pleased with the way that this knife has come out. I think that it looks really cool. The fact that it's so thick and so shiny is just amazing. I'm very glad that I didn't just leave this project after I broke it, and I'm glad that I followed through with it. It's really nice to get it done. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and coming on this journey of making this knife with me. I really enjoyed making it. I want to say a special thank you to all of my Patreons that help support this channel. If you want to consider helping support this channel, then the link will be in the description down below. Thanks very much for watching.